Straight You're now tuned in to the show where you learn the discipline to show up day after day to do the work, the confidence to put yourself out there boldly and authentically, and the mental toughness to continue showing up, doing the work, putting yourself out there, even when the success you've expected to achieve has yet to be achieved. And on top of all this, you get a huge dose of personal initiative. What is that? That is the go-getter energy that moves any one of us to go make things happen instead of waiting for things to happen. You know when you feel like that? I'm going to show you how to feel like that on a day-to-day -day basis. Then we're going to put all this together into a series of frameworks, approaches, insights, strategies, techniques, and one unifying philosophy that is called work on your game. My name is Dre Baldwin, also known as Dre All Day, and welcome to the show. And today's topic, today I'm going to lay out for you the traits of feminine men. And I'm not saying this in a positive way. I want to, and I'm going to be very clear exactly what I mean by this. When I talked about, actually, before I get into that, I already told you what the topic is. Let me first tell you that I have a daily motivation text that message that I send out every single day to anyone who wants to get a message that's going to keep you sharp, focused, and on point every single day, straight to your phone, completely free of charge. All you have to do is send me a text message right now and you'll get that text every day. My number is 305-384-6894. If you wanna receive that, just send me a text. The number is also down below in the show notes in case you didn't hear me when I just said that. Now this topic right here, traits of feminine men, and I'm not saying this in a, again, I'm not saying this in a positive way. First of all, let me be clear off top that every human has both masculine and feminine energy. All right, women have masculine energy and men have feminine energy. What I'm talking about here is going to refer back to what I talked about in episodes 1841 was the emasculation of men in episode 1863 how we bring masculinity back this is where I'm talking about men who uh, pose as or claim to be masculine or I think they want to be masculine but for whatever reason they have taken on many feminine traits in such a way that they have basically traded their masculinity for femininity and this is something that again this is not um saying that man can't have any feminine energy because again all men and women have both energies but at the same time seeing this when i see men who should be masculine showing off a lot of feminine traits it bothers me because i personally have certain expectations of men if i see a man presenting himself as masculine then there are certain expectations i have of that man especially Men who I know are old enough, as I talked about and touched on in yesterday's episode, they're old enough to know better, given the era that we all come from. They're old enough to know, all right, these are the, these are the expectations of a man being a man. Now, let me be clear. Let me allow something here for everyone who is listening. There's some of you are listening, and you may have a different set of expectations for what you expect from a man. Even a, a heterosexual man who's attracted to women, maybe you have a different set of expectations than what I have. I will allow for that. But at the same time, you are listening to a show called Work On Your Game, hosted by Dre Baldwin, and I'm the one talking, so I'm going to tell you how I see it. If you see it differently, I'm 100% open to that discussion. Go ahead and send me a text, or if you're watching this on YouTube, you can go ahead and leave me a, a comment, or however you want to get in touch with me about it. I'm open to that discussion. I would love to hear your views on what I'm going to say here today, but make sure you listen to everything that I said. All right. And please do not take one little snippet of 10 seconds or something that I say out of context and then challenge me on the 10 seconds when you didn't hear the, the three minutes before that and the three minutes after that. I had a couple of people do that. All right. Don't do that shit. All right. And you know exactly what you're doing. Don't do that. And those people who have done that, they know who they are. So anyway, seeing this, when I see men just emasculating themselves and not even being emasculated by anybody else, just emasculating themselves maybe to keep up with what you see or what you think is the cool thing to do or the cool thing to be, or men who maybe have just forgotten the principles, or maybe some men, some of you men, because really I'm making this episode for the men and ladies who are listening to this, if you know a man who needs to hear it, you let them listen to this, or if you know a man who may agree with this, you listen to this with them after you listen to it yourself, and y'all let me know if y'all concur with what I'm saying here, but I also see this, these traits kind of in some men who... Maybe they just never thought about the principles consciously, so they have gotten away from it because they haven't been consciously thinking about it. It's kind of like if someone doesn't think about what their disciplines are, and since they're not thinking about it, they just slowly move away from those disciplines to the point that there is no discipline and there's no, there's no continuity in what they're doing, and they realize, damn, I've let myself go. I need to get things in order again. That's what this episode is for, all right, is to let you know, all right, here are some ways that you might be slipping. Here are some ways that you might be fucking up. 
and let's fix this. Let's do something about this. So today what I'm gonna lay out is a couple points and I may have to do a, I may have to do a part two and part three on this because I just laid out the first couple that I was thinking about, but I might think about more and maybe some of you who made comments, you may offer some things that maybe I hadn't thought of that may lead to me doing future episodes on this series. This may be a series, it may not. I hope that is not, but I fear that it might be. <laughs> all right, so I'll say both of those at the same time. So I'm laying this out for all males to help check yourselves for these traits that if you find yourself uh, feminizing your actions and feminizing your energy, these need to be eradicated immediately. Again, I'll say one more time in this intro, there's nothing wrong with a man having any feminine traits or feminine energy, but at the same time, uh, we need the women to be feminine. So the man and the woman can't both be feminine. That's not gonna work, all right? There's any type of relationship, I don't care or what you're attracted to, what your orientation is, or you know, whatever you are claiming to be on a day-to-day -day basis. It's not gonna work when you have two feminines or two masculines, all right? You need the poles in any relationship. And I don't, again, I don't care what you're attracted to, every relationship needs that, male and female. But let's get into our points here so you get what I'm saying. Point number one, lack of emotional control. All right, and our topic once again today is traits of feminine men. When a man cannot control their emotions, this is, this is not good. This is not masculine, it's not manly. Again, in these phrases, when I say masculine and manly, and masculine and manly, I'm talking about my personal expectations for what I expect from a man, a heterosexual man. Now, I'm not necessarily uh, excluding or uh, leaving out the conversation of a homosexual man or a bisexual man or whatever other phrases there are for men who might be attracted to things other than just straight females but i don't have enough experience in that area i don't know too many people in that enough people in that area at least that are open about it to be speaking on it so i'm speaking on what i know which is heterosexual men who are attracted to women okay everybody clear on that so i'm not going to say that again so lack of emotional control this is something that i've touched on when i talked about uh, these guys on espn they were all football guys, and, uh, curiously enough, I don't know why that is, who've been on TV crying over things that they probably shouldn't have been crying about. Now, I get it if you, know, some, you lost a family member or something like that crazy happened, or you're really happy about something, tears of joy, but I've seen men on ESPN crying over uh, the social, summer of social justice. There was all kinds of men crying on TV. You know, we, we didn't have to list those all out. Just recently, I saw Randy Moss, who's a football player, former football player, Hall of Famer, great football player, crying over... Uh, something that happened with John Gruden, who's a former, now a former football coach, because he had used a some language that people deemed to be coded racist language about another black man. Not about Randy Moss. Randy Moss was on ESPN crying. It was, it was all very. It, it was just a little bit, a little bit funny style to me. That kind of stuff is that's feminine energy. Now I don't know if Randy Moss was acting because his producers told him he had to do it so he could get his paycheck, or if he really felt that. Either way. It was feminine. I don't care why he did it. He, the fact that he did do it is feminine. And let me be clear here. It is nothing wrong with a human being showing emotion, especially a man. There's nothing wrong with a man showing emotion. However, I believe that men have a certain social role in society. And that role is, and you can disagree with this role, but I'm going to lay it out. I expect a man to be able to control their emotions more than I would expect a woman or a child to control their emotions. So if you put a man, a woman, and a child in a room, I expect the child to have the least control, the woman to have the second most control, and the man to have the most control over their emotions. That's what I expect. And you don't have to agree with it, but I'm letting you know where I stand. So if, a, if you are a man and your significant other, let's say a woman, she loses control of her emotions, are you gonna start crying too just because she's crying? Or if your child starts crying over something, are you gonna start crying too? All right, eventually somebody gotta have some control in the room. Right, any of you who's ever studied leadership or read anything about leadership, I don't care if it's business leadership, sports leadership, any kind of leadership, the person with the most control over their emotions in the room is the leader. Not the most skilled person, not the most talented, not the person making the most money, not the person with the job title. The person who has the most control over their emotions, the calmest person, the person who is most poised is the leader in any situation in life. When everybody else is losing their minds and losing their heads and losing control, the person who is most in control is the leader simply because, first of all, by the law of contrast. And secondly, because when people get emotional, they lose control of their, the logistical sections of their brain. They can't really think in a logical way, a logical, or not logistical, but logical parts of their brain when they get emotional. So the most in control person is the leader. And 
my expectation of a man, the, the social role of a man in society is to weed. And again, some of you may think that it's not like that anymore, Dre. It's a new world. It's a new era. Fine. That's your world. It's like that. In my world, the man leads. In my world, the men are the leaders. In my world, the man needs to have the most control. They need to be the most poised so that they are qualified to feel, fulfill their role of leading. Because everybody's a role player. Leading is a role. Following is a role. But you got to be willing and able to fulfill your role, whatever that role is going to be. Men need to have more emotional control than the women and the children. Now, listen, a man, and emotional, emotion is not just crying. A man can get angry, frustrated, sad. I have all of those feelings. While at the same time, expressing such emotion, if he so chooses, with some level of control. It doesn't mean you suppress the feelings, but you control yourself even when you are expressing the feelings. And if you catch yourself expressing them in an out of control way, you catch yourself, like I just said, and you get yourself back, un back under control. And the older that a man gets, the better he should be able to control this emotion. So when I see a man over the age of 30 or 40 who can't control his emotions, I'm looking at that man like, All right, what are you doing? Right, what are you doing? Right, what, where did you lose your way that to where you can't control your emotions? You're over the age of 30. Now, I get it. A 17-year-old kid, they can't control their emotions. And they're just popping off or even 25 but 35, 40, right, at that point, I'm, now I'm looking at you like, all right, you should be past this by this point. Point number two, today's topic, once again, traits that I see of feminine men that need to be eradicated. Point number two, a man claiming victimization as opposed to pushing back. Now, if any of you ever looked at a scale of masculinity and femininity, when a man is in, or a person, human, it doesn't have to be male, or it can be male or female, on a masculine or the feminine scales, the type of energies and the type of things that you see from someone in a masculine energy and in a feminine energy, when a man gets, when a woman gets into rather, excuse me, let me not even say man or woman, when a human gets into the extremes of feminine energy, one of the traits is feeling victimized. Another trait is you know, making big things out of small things. Another trait is just emotional outbursts. This is what happens when Someone who is on, on the femininity scale goes too far, quote unquote, too far on the femininity scale. These are the kind of things that you see. Now, on the masculine side, when a, a human goes too far in masculine energy, they get into what we now know as what we call toxic masculinity. That's when a man becomes very aggressive. When a man becomes very, it's all about win at all costs. When a man becomes very, he's just like pushing back on everything, maybe a little bit defensive and the defensiveness may show itself as aggression. That's what happens when a man or not a man, a human goes very far on the masculinity scale. So when I see a man who is maybe out of balance and let's just say energetically and they start claiming victimization as opposed to pushing back against whatever the, the thing that threw them off balance is, that's more feminine energy than masculine energy. Because understand, no person is perfect. I'm not perfect, none of us is perfect. So when a human gets out of balance energetically, they're going to show some of these traits. They're either gonna show traits from the feminine too far or the masculine too far. And I don't like when I see men who are out of balance, nothing wrong with being out of balance because it happens to all of us, but then when they go out of balance, they're showing feminine traits instead of masculine traits. When a man feels out of balance, and I've done this many times, a man will become maybe argumentative, will become uh, just trying to win at all costs. A man will become aggressive, verbally aggressive, physically aggressive. This is what happens when the masculine energy goes too far. But nowadays, I'm seeing a lot of men, instead of doing that, and again, this is the, the era that I come from, from, and like I talked about in yesterday's episode, now I'm seeing a lot of men, there's like, they're going on the feminine side of too far. And I'm like, where is this coming from? Men claiming to be victimized. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I'll give you an example. There's a, a man that I know that I was just talking to recently. And he was bothered by, there was a, a group conversation going on. All right, group conversation. This man was part of the group conversation. And this man was bothered by some jokes that were pointed at him. There were jokes that were told at his expense. And everybody's laughing about it. And it's funny, ha ha. Nobody was saying anything. It was just a, a normal thing. And you no, know, the conversation was over and it was over. Now I spoke to this male maybe about a week after this conversation happened. Now, nobody gave any indication 
during the conversation or even in the immediate you know, aftermath of the conversation that anything was wrong. It was just jokes and nobody was saying anything. It was a normal, these things happen all the time amongst this group of people. Now, but I spoke to this man maybe about four or five days after these jokes had been told. And for whatever reason, this man was not happy with what had happened in that conversation. Now, I'm going to tell you, there's nothing wrong with someone not being happy with something that gets said, but let me, let me go further into this. When I spoke to this male, he used certain terms that told me, and I told this to him, I said this directly to this man, is that uh, you're, being kinda, you're being very feminine right now, and I was trying to understand why. He said that people were you no know, clowning him. He felt like people were ganging up on him. He didn't like the fact that he was being joked on. And the truth is, from what I just told you, Everybody in the group gets joked on. Everybody gets joked on. I, I tell jokes about these people. These people tell jokes about me. And it, it, everybody goes around. Nobody is exempt. Everybody gets a turn here. Some people clearly just can't take jokes as well as other people can take jokes. And that I 100% understand. I've, I've been around long enough to know this. I've been in enough locker rooms. I've been around enough men. I've been around enough people, period, to know that some people can take jokes and some people can't. Some people can give jokes, but they can't quite take them the way that they can give them out. I 100% understand that. And this guy clearly is one of those folks. And I've kind of known that for a while, but this is the first time that this man, who I've known for some time, has had this kind of outburst on this type of situation. Now, the environments that I come from and the era that I come from, and I'm sure this man also, because he's we're close to the same age. Everybody gets joked on. All right, where I when I was in high school, for example, playing basketball, every time when we weren't actually on the court playing, when we were just hanging out in the locker rooms or on the sidelines before and after the games, even during the games, sometimes traveling to the games, coming from the game, that's all we did was just talk shit to each other and about each other and joke on each other and laugh at each other. And if you couldn't take it or you couldn't dish it out then you probably didn't want to be on that team. You probably didn't want to come around. You probably didn't want to come outside. You didn't want to come to the playground. You didn't want to be on the team simply because you wouldn't be able to handle it. So we basically toughened ourselves up in a way that we weren't doing it on purpose, but this is how it worked. And again, this is the environment that I come from. This is the era that I come from. I'm not saying all of you need to be like that, but this man that I'm referring to, this story that I'm telling you, I know that he's from these eras. I know that he's from these environments, so I know that he knows better. So this is the part that kind of perplexes me when I see men that all of a sudden they're jumping to this feminine energy when I know that they couldn't have came from where they came from with this kind of energy. They couldn't have gotten to where they are with feminine energy, but all of a sudden they become feminine. This, this is the part that makes me curious. This is the part that is, is making me wonder, like, what the hell is going on? What happened? All right, when, when did the switch get flipped? That's what I'm trying to figure out. And I understand some people can't take it now. Where I come from, maybe where you come from with us, we have different phrases for this. Some people call it snapping. Some people call it rankings. People call it playing the dozens. It's just people talking shit to each other and, or busting your balls. I remember when I watched The Sopranos, they would call it that. Busting your balls or in a casino or Goodfellas, one of those movies. That's, it's basically just seeing how much of a ribbing can you take before you can't take anymore. How much can you take how, and how much can you give it back? Because... When you can hit back verbally against people who are trying to hit at you, when you can hit back and they realize you can hit back and you're sharp with it, they stop coming to you because they know that they're going to get it back worse than they gave it to you. They're going to leave you alone. It's kind of like if someone knows that they punch you, you're going to hit them back twice as hard, then they stop trying to punch you. So they know that they're going to get it back. So you kind of learn these things. And this is where, you know, to this day, I mean, I make my my business is me using my verbal abilities, whether I write it down or whether I say it out loud on this mic. But one of the ways that I got sharp at being able to think on my feet and you know, be able to think quickly and respond on my feet to situations is by being in those situations where if you couldn't come back, somebody made a joke about you and everybody in the room's laughing at you and you can't come back and get the, and put the attention back on them, then you're probably not going to want to keep coming in. You're probably not going to want to keep coming outside to the playground. And this is just the way that it worked. And everything was open season. Like, well, the way that people were joking, it, it didn't matter if it was your haircut, your clothes, the size of your head, something that happened when you try to talk to that girl at the party last week. Everything was open season, everything. And you learned to take it and you learned to dish it out. And the better you got at dishing it out, as I said, the less you got targeted. And if you couldn't take it, now you probably, we probably wouldn't see you anymore. Now, I'm not saying that any of this is right or wrong, but it's just the way that I learned it. So what we nowadays has been socialized and accepted as quote unquote bullying that was normal behavior in the era that I come from. And again, this is why I'm making it, I made it clear at the beginning of this episode. I'm not saying that you have to agree with this. I'm explaining to you 
this is the way that I see things. This is why I have these certain expectations of men, especially men of a certain age. Then when you get to a certain age that I know that you know these things, I know that you know. So I get it if I, somebody's 22 and they have a little bit more feminine energy or I don't know their era as well. But if you're 35, you're 47 and you're doing this, then I'm wondering, all right, what are you doing? Because I know that you know better. Point number three. Today's topic, once again, is traits of feminine men, overly feminine men. Number three is chronic passive aggression. Now, this one is probably the most egregious, egregious uh, transgression that I see from men who I expect masculine energy from, but they're being feminine. I really do not respect passive aggression coming from men. I don't care how old you are. I just don't respect passive aggression from men. I understand it and expect it from females. I do not like it when I see a man being passive aggressive. I'll give you another example. There's a, a gentleman I know who some time ago, something got said towards him in a, a group setting that for whatever reason he didn't like. Now, I don't know, I didn't know that he didn't like what got said to him. I didn't know because he didn't say anything. The conversation is going, something got said to him. He, I later found out that he didn't like what got said to him, but he didn't say anything, right? So about a week goes by and I'm reaching out and speaking to this person in the same group setting. I'm reaching out and speaking to this person and this person starts getting, this person just got really, um, how can I say, kind of testy, kind of like passive aggressive with me. They were saying things that I could tell there was some aggression behind it, but they weren't being direct about what the issue was, but they were sending it in my direction. And I'm wondering like, and the thing that we were talking about was some very innocuous thing that didn't really matter. And I'm wondering like, what the hell, where the hell is this energy coming from? What is this person doing? So they were being this passive aggressive type person. And this is in, in text message that they're doing this. And I'm wondering what the hell is going on? So the next day after this person is showing this passive aggression towards me, I call this person. I called him directly because I want to know what the hell is going on. Now I want you to pay very close attention to the detail there. I called them to find out what's going on. Now when I get this person on the phone and I'm asking them, I'm asking them, yo, like, What's, up? What's that energy about that you were sending to me yesterday? This person goes on it. This person just starts ranting at me. They just basically uh, unload on me and start letting me know that they didn't like something that got said to them like a week earlier. Now, here's the problem with that. Let me just pause in the story. Let me tell you what the problem with this is. If this individual, and I said this to this person, so everything I'm saying to you all here, I said this directly to them on the phone. I said, if you had an issue with something that got said to you in a conversation a week ago, you should have said something in that conversation a week ago when it happened. Either that or B, that was option A. Option B, you should have reached out to me because I'm the person who said the thing that they didn't like. If you had an issue with something that I said, you should have reached out to me and said, yo, Dre, let me holler at you about that thing that you said because I got an issue with that and here's the issue and you no, know, let's address this because that's what men do. Men address things when they happen and they address them directly with the source of the situation. Now, that's what masculine energy does. Let me not say men. That's what I expect of men, but that's what I expect from a masculine man. Feminine men, on the other hand, this is what they do. They are bothered by the thing that happened, just like the masculine man is, but instead of addressing it, here's what they do. They hold it in, don't say anything. They stew over it. They kind of let it marinate inside of them. And then when they finally get a chance to talk about it, they unload in this emotional kind of rant. They kind of, they basically try to, they basically kind of try to tell you off. This is something that, I expect from a female. I expect this from feminine humans, usually women. Or the type of people that I'm around, the feminine is the women. I expect that from a woman. I expect a woman to maybe be bothered by a few little things that happen over the course of three, four, seven days, and then on the eighth day, blow up at me over some things they've been holding in. I get it when a woman does. I don't like it, but I understand it because I expect feminine energy from a female. But when a man does it, I don't, I don't respect it. I don't like it and I will directly address that man and say to them like, yo, what the hell are you doing? And this is what I said to this man. I said, well, first of all, if you had an issue, why didn't you say something when it happened? Number two, why didn't you reach out to me since I'm the one who said it? And number three, why am I, even now, a week later, why am I the one calling you to ask you what's going on when I see your passive aggression? Why didn't you just reach out to me and say, yo, here's my issue with you so we can get this on the table and we know what's up. Even if it means, all right, we not, we're not going to talk to each other anymore and the relationship's over or we're going to address it and we can move forward. But why not say anything? What if I didn't call this guy? What was he going to do? He just wasn't going to say anything. He was going to let it sit and never say anything about the situation. This is bitch assness 
And this is what I this is what I remember years ago. Uh, Puff Daddy had this show called Making a Band, and he made these T-shirts. He said some of the people in the group were being. They said it was a lot of bitch asses. He said no bitch asses. And I remember he made T-shirts, and I had one. This is probably like 2007, 2008. But this is bitch assness from men. When if you have an issue with another man, you don't hold it in and not say anything and just sit and let, just let it sit inside of you and not say nothing. And then when you finally get a chance to let a little bit of the air out of that balloon, you get passive aggressive. Like that's for females. This is just the way that I see it. Okay. And I'm not telling you all, you have to think this way, but this is the way that I look at things. It is for females to be passive aggressive It's for females. When you got an issue, two men have an issue with each other, or one man has an issue with another man. You don't say anything to that man. And then you get passive aggressive when you finally get a chance to engage with that man instead of just saying to him, yo, here's my issue with you and what you got going on. I'll give you another example. I was watching a, a radio interview once. This is the Breakfast Club I was watching. This is years ago. And the one of the hosts of the Breakfast Club is a guy named DJ Envy. And the it's three hosts. So it's Angela Yee, Charlemagne, DJ Envy. And the guest on the show that day, I believe it was DJ Drama. He's another DJ. You don't have to know who these people are. It doesn't matter. But the whole interview is going on and the guest, the one guest, he's talking and they had a whole conversation. The interview was like 30 minutes, maybe an hour. And when it finally gets to the end of the interview, one of the hosts, DJ Envy, he's been sitting there the whole time as one of the hosts of the show, but he has, he's been kind of quiet. He's been kind of reticent during the conversation. And finally, at the end of the conversation, someone points out like, yo, DJ Envy, you've been kind of quiet during this conversation what's going on and finally at the end of the conversation dj envy finally lets out and says hey you know i and i can't remember exactly what he said but he lets on that years back there had been some engagement between him and this guest that he didn't like the way that it went so he was feeling a certain type of way about the way that conversation went and he had just been holding it in the entire time but he hadn't said anything so the whole conversation going on this dude's not saying anything about why he's you know a little bit upset or bothered by this guy's presence because something that happened years back that he clearly never had addressed and now he was finally addressing it. That is bitch assness. You sat there the whole time, didn't say anything. This dude's on your show. You could have approached him before he came on the air and said, yo, let me holler at you for five minutes about something that happened way back so that we can have a smooth conversation here. And he just sat there the whole time. And then, and this is the part that really bothers me when men do this. And I'm just using the DJ anything as an example. So I'm not saying he personally is this. I'm not saying this represents all of him as a man. I'm just, this is just an example that I'm thinking of as I'm talking. But even then when it got pointed out, somebody had to pull it out of him. Somebody had to say to him like, yo, is there something on your mind? Because you're not saying anything. So, and this is the other part of the passive aggression. Like if you got an issue with another man, yeah, all right, there's, the man's right there. All right, the man just reached out to you. All right, say something. The man's right there in front of you. Say something so that we can get it out on the table. Say, yo, let me holler at you because something that happened in the past is bothering me. I want to talk to you about it. That's what a man does. You don't need another person to goad you into saying what's on your mind. All right, that's feminine energy. All right, that's bitch assness. And I, again, I do not respect passive aggression in men. So anyway, as I'm going back to the story, this man who I was reaching out to, he finally let me know there was an issue. He goes on this long rant and he's saying all this stuff. And he's just going and going and going. I could barely even catch everything that he's saying because he's just spilling it all out because clearly he's been holding this in for a week. All right. And then when uh, he finally stops talking and I say, OK, now I heard everything you said. It's my turn to speak now. And then he goes on a, a more of a rant and then he hangs up the phone on me. <laughs> this really happens. So he hangs up the phone on me. And I'm sitting there like, all right, this is some this is some real female shit that this person is doing. Like, I, I, I do not respect this from men. I understand when a woman does it, but I wouldn't want a woman to do it to me. But I, I definitely don't understand when a man does it. If a man has an issue with another man, you address the issue. Feminized men, for whatever reason, they don't do this. They get passive aggressive. You notice that something's up, but they don't say what it is. That's what passive aggression is. See, passive aggression is not being completely quiet and doing nothing. Passive aggression is... People letting out a little bit of the energy so that you can tell there's something going on, but they won't say what it is. They won't be direct about who they have it or what they have an issue with. They do just enough that it gets your attention and you're like, what's up? And that opens the door for them. That gives them the permission to actually be a fucking man and say what's on their mind. Men don't need permission to say what's on their mind. And that's the issue that I have with passive aggression is you're basically goading someone else to ask you what's up so you can say what's on your mind. If you're an actual man and you just say what's on your mind, you don't need anyone to prompt you to do it. And this is my issue with it. And this is why I'm spending so much time just on this point right here. I can give a whole episode just on this. Masculinity 
controls its emotions. And controlling your emotions doesn't mean holding them back. It also means letting them out and using them, but in a way that you control the strings. You say, this is how it's gonna go. This is the conversation that I wanna have right now. That's what masculine energy does. Feminine energy, it's more of a challenge that you gotta kinda extract it out of an individual. And again, with men, I don't wanna do, I don't wanna deal with this. I expect it from a woman, from a man, all right, don't do this. If you're going to be around me, I don't care if you're a friend of mine, if you're a business partner, if you're going to buy something from me, if you want to be coached by me, no bitch assness, no feminine energy from men. All right, that's, I'm letting that out right now. So any of you men who has a little bit too much feminine energy, all right, you can keep listening to this show, but do not come to any programs that I'm doing because I will call you out on your bullshit. And if that makes you uncomfortable, then you're just going to have to leave the room. Let's recap today's class, which is traits of feminized men see episode 1841 the emasculation of men episode 1863 how we bring masculinity back seeing this bothers me because i have certain expectations uh socially of what i expect from a man and what i expect from a female so i'm laying this all out so men can check themselves number one lack of emotional control all humans have emotions nothing wrong with anyone showing emotions but i expect a man to have more control over their emotions than a female or a child number two Claiming victimization when attacked as opposed to pushing back because we all get thrown off balance at times. If you get thrown off, I expect a man to push back against the situation, whereas I, I expect a woman to feel victimized by the situation. And those are two completely different energies based on the same based on the same stimulus. So you can push back as a man. That's what I expect a man to do. I expect that kind of energy from men. And this is kind of what we learn and the era that I come from, like I talked about yesterday, we learn this. And so I don't understand then when a man who is from this era is vic calling themselves a victim or painting themselves or presenting themselves as a victim when they know a lot better. And I know they know better. And number three, chronic passive aggression. This is the worst and most egregious trait that I ever see in men. If people not liking something to get said to them, don't say anything, that you gotta pull it out of them and go them to actually say what's on their mind when it's clear that something's on their mind, but they won't say it themselves. This is bitch asses, this is feminine energy. I do not wanna be around a female like men. All right, I don't want feminized men around me. If you are a man, I expect you to have masculine energy. And listen, if you happen to be a feminized man who comes around, you didn't hear this episode, and you start showing that feminine energy, you're gonna get called out on it by me directly to your face and you will be uncomfortable enough you're either going to change or you're going to leave the room but i'm letting everybody know right now all right, this is my expectation of a man and anybody who is offended by this or turned off by it good you're supposed to be send me a text you want to receive my daily motivation text i send it to you every day directly to your phone free of charge my number is 305-384-6894 and work on your game university is open right now any of you want to join the group coaching program bulletproof mindset branded business two different groups for business one for mindset and third day mastermind one-on-one -on -one coaching all at work on your game university.com work on your game dre all